The old cook coming back at you with another part. I think this is part four in this video series, Pan di Spagna, right? The Italian classical dessert. Uh, where we're at now is I'm at medium-ish peaks. What I want to do is let me slow this down. I was at level six, right, on the kitchen stand mixer. So when you, whenever you lower the speed, just lower it slowly so that you don't lose all the hard work that you did to get to this point. Okay, we are almost at the end, uh, almost at the finish line here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my, my vanilla. I'm going to add one teaspoon of this, and I'm also going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. Uh, mix that up for a little bit, then I'm going to add my flour, my cornstarch, and my baking soda. When I add the baking soda, this cake is literally just going to explode with gas because in here there are eight eggs, one teaspoon of lemon juice and a little bit of lemon zest and 250 grams of sugar. So the, when the lemon mixes with the baking soda that's in here, it's just literally going to expand and explode. And that's why I use high protein flour. There are 50 grams of flour in there. Uh, I like to use the chiral type of flour, which is a very high protein flour, and then 200 grams of cornstarch. So 50 grams of flour, 200 grams of cornstarch, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one quarter teaspoon of salt, eight eggs, 250 grams of sugar, and one teaspoon of lemon juice with, uh, with half the lemon zest. Like I zested a half a lemon and put that in there. Okay, my oven is, is going away right now. My oven is at... 300 or it's uh, warming up to 350 degrees, which is like perfect timing. When it hits 350, the cake goes in and my bunt pan is already nice and uh, it's chilling out in the fridge, but it's already nice and buttered and cornstarched. And the reason why I use cornstarch is because it helps to create a nice crusty caramelization action uh, as the cake bakes inside as opposed to flour because then you have a floury exterior. So this way you have a nice crusty, crunchy caramelization action going on. We'll show you that in a, in a second. Right now I just want to keep this in here so that the butter, just so that the butter doesn't melt. Uh, so now is when I want to add my, my vanilla bean and also my salt. So what I'm going to do is quarter teaspoon, right? Make sure you have a good set of uh, measuring utensils. This is just pink Himalayan or Himalayan pink salt. Right, quarter of a teaspoon. If you're a little bit shy, that's totally fine. But just go ahead and sprinkle this in. Try to get some even distribution. And then at the same time, I want to get my teaspoon, right? Teaspoon of vanilla. This is Vanilla Bean Kings. I do like their products. They make a Madagascar vanilla that's even uh, more potent and stronger than this one is. If you want to use whole vanilla bean, that's fine. You got to scrape it and do the whole thing. The better your vanilla, the better cake's going to taste. So let me go ahead and pour out one teaspoon of this, which is about right there. There you go, get all that goodness in there. And this stuff is pretty strong. I'm tempted to lick the spoon, but it's gonna be, it's gonna taste like overly overpowered. Okay, so this goes on to here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my mixer on back on to like level five or so. Remember, start slow, because you don't wanna ruin anything that you just created. So just to make sure this is all incorporated, I'm gonna be doing this. We are at the final moments. We're almost at the finish line of this process. And just let this go for about a minute or so. By the way, if you have any comments of anything we've done so far in this video playlist, comment in the comment section down there below. Video one talked, to, talked about an overview of what we were doing. Video two was when we put the wet ingredients in here, the eggs, the lemon juice, and the sugar. Video three, what did we do in video three? I think we mixed up the flour. Uh, the dry ingredients, right? Then video four, I went ahead and buttered the pan and also got the oven going. So now we're at video five, which is where we're going to incorporate everything, pan it, and shove it in the oven. Uh, so that's good enough for me. Okay. By the way, in case you're curious and you're tuning in for the first time, this was what a buddy of mine did who butchered my recipe. They basically took ingredients out. They wanted to add their own stuff. And basically what happened was is the whole cake lost structure. Everything sunk to the bottom and that's what they ended up with. So this is the old, this is what my buddy tried. That's why I'm doing this whole video series to try to get <laughs> documentation of how it should be done. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the bowl, right? Very, very important. And then what I want to do is I just want to add half of this, even like a third, just so I can incorporate it. Now's a good time to bring out the pan because hopefully if I time this... If I time this just right, if I time this just right, 
that oven will hit 350 degrees when I'm done pouring. Uh, and then I can just shove the whole cake in there. Okay, so here we go. So this is out of the way. Let me get this out of the way. It's always it's always a good idea to just kind of tidy up as you go. Like I've lost a lot of the stuff that was on here. I put it in the sink, washed it, all the good stuff. Uh, but now's a good time to add our dry ingredients. So remember, there are 50 grams of high protein flour in here, 200 grams of cornstarch, uh, and then basically I've got one teaspoon of baking soda. So here comes the explosion if you want to see that. So I'm just going to add a little bit at a time, maybe like half or so. Make sure I get everything in there. Lift up my bowl. Now this is where most people make the mistake is they crank it up on high and everything goes flying all over the place. What you want to do is you just want to stay between levels one and two on your mixer. If you're using a hand mixer, just, just restart it at the slowest speed. Or you could fold it in with a silicone spatula or spoon or whatever you want to use. But I find that just doing it in here is just fine for me. Okay, so here's level one. I just want to make sure I'm getting it in there. Maybe level two. All you're trying to do here is just incorporate the flour and the cornstarch into the beautiful egg and lemon juice and sugar mixture. You're combining the dry with the wet. You just, you're just trying to incorporate. That's all we're trying to do here. There's no need to overly beat this or anything. Just incorporation in the nation leads to success. <laughs> there goes my oven. So my oven just rang. So we're looking good. We're looking good. Everything's looking good. So maybe now I might go to level three, just to make sure it's in there. Building structure, adding structure, right? We're adding the structure for all those gases to expand into as the cake rises. You get a more fluffy cake, a more airy cake. You get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. And again, just always slow it down the same way that you brought it up, just in phases. I'm going to turn this off completely. I'm going to lower my bowl again. And let me go, let's take it away just so I got more room. And then what I'm gonna do is wipe my hands because my hands are all dirty. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna get the rest of the flour, cornstarch mixture in there. Good enough for me, this will go in the sink. So same process, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the bowl. Right, and then again, just slowly, <laughs> slowly. So level one, just to make sure we're, we're getting everything going and moving, there's another shot for you if you wanna go ahead and see that. By the way, a lot of the kitchen products that I use will be down below in the description section, so make sure to check that out. Uh, I'm going to go to level two now. Right, we're just we're we're at the we're almost at the finish line. We don't want to ruin this by it splattering all over the place. But right now, what's going on in there is the baking soda is reacting with the lemon juice, causing gases to form, and the flour, the high protein flour, is what's giving the structure like a balloon for those gases to expand without popping or bursting, like in the case of my buddy that tried to make it. Uh, but like I said, he left some stuff out, he put some extra stuff in, I don't know what he was trying to do. So let's just go to level three just to make sure everything is fully incorporated. We are almost there. By the way, if you've been following along in the video series, give yourself a big like and a big thumbs up. I appreciate everybody who likes these videos, subscribes to the channel. It's always good to connect with everyone. And with that being said, if you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll make sure to try to answer them as quickly as I can. Also, you never know when your comment could become a future video. So who knows? And, and sometimes I mention you by name and sometimes I don't, let's see what happens. But anyways, I feel like we've gotten good incorporation here. Uh, this is where most people make the mistake of they'll go one level higher and they'll break all of the air bubbles. So you just want to go low and slow, just incorporation, incorporation, incorporation. Incorporate the flour, the cornstarch, and the baking soda into the egg mixture. Okay, so I feel like we're there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this. Level two, and then level one, and then off. Okay, so here we are. So now I'm just going to lower my bowl. Look at how nice this batter is, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice bowl and do this. So here's my wooden board. Sorry, not bowl, but a wood board. What I want to do now is this has been sitting in the fridge, right? It's been buttered and I put cornstarch in there so that the cornstarch, when I bake it, it basically caramelizes and cr it makes a nice little crust, like a nice little crunchy exterior to the pan de España, which is very similar to an angel food cake or like a sponge cake. So what I want to do is one last little tap. One last little tap, like a drop like that. It's perfect. That way I got rid of all the excess clumping that happened. So now I can go ahead and pour my batter in. So with my spatula, right, silicone spatula, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whisk part out or the beater part and do this. Uh, let's do this real quick, just so I can show you all how beautiful that was. We ended up with something similar to like maybe a softer peak, right? I got it up to medium peaks at one point just to make sure I was fully incorporated uh, the air, or that a lot of air was fully incorporated there. And then as you add the flour, obviously it's gonna start settling back down again. So that's good enough for me. This will go in the sink. And then now you can go ahead and pour. So very careful process here. Give yourself enough room. Try not to pour on the edges if you can avoid that. I mean the, the outside, to, like try not to let it spill over is what I'm trying to get at. So basically just a slow process of just a nice little pour. And then a good idea too is rotate your pan. Oh, look at that. Rotate your pan as you're, as you're pouring. That way you get nice, even distribution of this. And you're, what you do want to avoid is you want to avoid any large, large air pockets that, because as you're pouring this in here, right, you might get a very large air pocket like right there. And I'll show you all how to fix that in a second. We're going to use a, a toothpick or a spoon or something similar just to kind of go through there. The smell right now is incredible. I'm getting the, the, the vanilla, the Vanilla Bean King's vanilla. Oh my God, fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and switch. Switch hands right here. And this is where it gets interesting because I need my right hand <laughs> to do this. Okay, so now we're here. By the way, the vanilla bean paste that I'm using is Vanilla Bean Kings. Love this stuff. Great product. They do make a Madagascar vanilla that's even more potent than this one is, I think. Uh, but great product, great company, love their stuff. So now what I want to do is I want to scoop in there. And you may lose me for a second just on the camera, but I just want to make sure and guarantee that I'm getting all this nice goodness, right? Because every last little bit that you pour in here is just one more crumb that you're getting out of your final cake. Okay, my oven's already preheated to 350. That's going... What I want to do now is just rotate. Remember, rotate your pan. Make it easy on yourself. And look, we just we just got a little, little bit left in there that I need to scrape out. Uh, it's so tempting right now to lick this bowl. But remember, you have raw egg in here, right? And you've got raw flour in here. So try to avoid doing that. You know, if a uh, furry four-legged animal happens to, like, uh, prematurely get in there... <laughs> and like the bowl or whatever, you know, try to prevent that if you can anyways. Okay, so this is about the majority of it. You know, you could sit there and get every last little, every last little schmutz, but for me, this is good enough. This is good enough, I'm just gonna let this go. Okay, last little thing in the whole process. Uh, let me see if I can grab. Okay, last little phase in the process is try to get like a longer, uh, you know, shish kebab skewer or some kind of skewer of some sort. And all you want to do is gently, <laughs> gently just insert and just literally do one of these just so that you can, you can pop any of the bigger, larger air bubbles that are in there, right? Because the bigger the air bubble, the more it's going to expand. Then you're just going to have like a big hole in your cake, which might be fine. You know, for some people, maybe they like that texture of like Swiss cheese, right? Formaggio Svizzera, as I, <laughs> as I always say. I used to call my dog Swiss cheese. Like as one of his nicknames, because he would he would turn my socks into Swiss cheese. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's a little short little side story for you. Okay, so once you've done this, you're pretty much good to go, ready to pop into the oven. Let me go ahead and do this real quick. Get this in the sink to wash or throw away or whatever. Uh, remember, have plenty of paper towels and towels on hand. So here we are. This is pretty much almost the finish line. What I've got going on here is my oven has been preheated to 350 degrees on bake. I'm on the lower part of the oven or the bigger part of the oven, right? I'm gonna be on the middle rack because when I open that door, it's gonna be a blast of heat. So here we go. So here comes the oven. Let's go ahead and get this beautiful, beautiful. You might wanna give it like one last little tap just to make sure you're golden. And then also at the very last second, try to clean up some of these edges here, like the outer edges, especially the exterior, the outside, because this is just going to uh, burn and it might give you a, a false sense of burning of your cake if these outer parts are burning right here, right? Like if this starts burning on the outside, like if you had any spillage here, you might get a false sense that your cake is burning when it's actually not burning. 
So uh, just make sure to kind of go through and just tidy up as you go. That looks good to me. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Oh, so close. So close. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in now. I'm going to try to center it as best I can within the, within the thing. And then we're closing the door. So now the crucial part is not to touch the oven. I'm going to bake this 350 degrees for a solid 20 minutes. You're going to be, if you're doing this at home, you're going to be smelling so many great aromas. You're going to be getting notes of lemon. You're going to be getting vanilla. You're going to be getting the sweetness of the sugar as this bakes away. So 20 minutes from now, according to my clock at 1255, I will come back, pop the cake out and show you all how gorgeous it is. Uh, what you may want to do in the meantime while you're here is get yourself set up for success. So have a good cutting board ready. I'm going to break out a cooling rack. I'm going to clean most of the stuff up, but I'm going to have a cooling rack ready to go. What I'm going to do is once I take the cake out, that's going to the whole pan and everything is going to go on top of the cooling rack. I'm going to let it sit for about five to ten minutes or so, and then I'm going to I'm going to empty it out. Usually when the cake comes back to about like close to room temperature, maybe room temperature plus maybe 20 degrees or so. That's how you know when it's time to, to pour out your cake or, or dump out your cake. So we'll do that in the next video. Anyways, if you do like what you're seeing, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button down there below, comment in the comment section, check out the description section for links to a lot of the stuff that I use, a lot of the kitchen products that I use in these videos. And I will catch you all on the next exciting video, the finish line. <laughs>